College as one of the careers advisors and C CEIAG coordinators. My name's Claire Crossbury and I am a lecturer in business, IT and media here at Furness College um, and I teach both FE and HE learners. So today we're going to talk to you about what we can offer for students, um, for adult students who are looking to study either further education or higher education and what support we have available to enable students to go on their learning journey. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with asking Claire some questions about around what the support is that we have um, and then she'll answer those with the information. OK, so Claire, um, one of them is um, is around um, the teaching groups and the sizes of the groups that we have. Yeah, so usually at Furness College and um, we try to keep our teaching groups fairly small um, and I think that enables us to kind of have that real sort of you build those one to one relationships with students and it enables the group to really get to know each other as well. And um, so I taught a HE class this year and there was approximately nine learners in that class. Now, obviously, it's not a fixed number, but I think Furness College tends to aim for groups of around um, 16. So obviously that's a lot smaller than what you can probably remember from school and things like that but having those smaller class sizes it's really good because people feel a lot more comfortable getting involved in things like class discussion and people tend to build up really really good relationships with the classmates and obviously as a tutor you build up really good relationships with the learners as well so having those smaller groups I think works and Ebony you were a student in one of those groups as well so how, how did yeah. you feel being in a smaller group? Um, I thought it worked really well Um, I felt like we were able to get more support from sort of a tutor point of view and um, but it also enabled to work with our peers as well you know we were able to bounce ideas off each other when it came to group tasks and even in lockdown over teams we still had that facility in breakout rooms or just in class discussions that we could do virtually and I think it worked really well. Yeah, definitely. And Ebony's group that she's talking about there did a lot of sort of group projects and smaller group projects. And it was really nice seeing those like professional relationships develop as well. So certainly smaller groups is something that um, particularly in our area kind of works well and just helps to ease people back into education as well. If it's something that, yeah. you know, they've maybe not been in education for a few years, it feels kind of um, less frightening, less intimidating. And the mm -hmm. people soon get to realise that it's, you know, it's kind of having a small support of group of peers and a tutor kind of there to guide them so yeah I think it works really well yeah brilliant thanks Claire so just kind of leading on from that then um, what support is available for uh, students here with additional needs or who just need a bit of a more of a level of support in the lessons so generally, obviously, your first point of support is always your tutor. Um, you know, you'd always ask them for any extra help if you need it. But if um, someone is coming back into learning and they maybe have um, an extra learning need or something that they want exploring that maybe hasn't been at school or something like that, they think they might need a little bit of extra support with things like um, reading, writing, whatever that may be. Um, they'd, I'd say, let us know on your application form. Let us know an interview. Certainly let your tutor know and we've got a brilliant learning support team here at the college so um, we can work with students to find out kind of what their needs are what is the appropriate level of support that they can provide um, and you know we've got a whole range of sort of assistive technology and things like that that can help those students that need that and um, so anything like that we're well equipped to support and if it's just something like um Oh, I'm not as familiar as using the computers or I'm not quite up there with digital learning. We've also kind of got um, a digital team as well that can kind of help with that. So up in the library in our learning resource centre, we've got a team there that can help, you know, even the basics of how to navigate a library catalogue and stuff like that. So whatever the level of support is there, we, we've got a team at Furness College set up to help learners and particularly adult learners as well. Brilliant, thanks Claire. Um, and also learner voice opportunities, what's there for students, how can they get involved with that? 
yeah, that's a really important question. I think particularly for older learners as well, who, you know, if you're doing HE, you've obviously paid money for your course and you really want to make sure you're getting the best experience. So learner voice is really, really important to us at Furness College. And we've got a number of different ways that you can do that. We, um, we always say, again, in the first instance, please speak to your tutor if you've got any concerns, anything that you'd like to do more of, any queries. Um, but there's also like more formalised processes as well. So people have got the opportunity to be student reps, which means they can meet up with other students from around the college, different age groups, different subjects, and they can really be um, the representative for the group and voice that their group's opinion, you know, to other forums in the college and make sure that their opinions are shared. Um, and certainly for HE students as well, the different university partners we work with like to have what we call student liaison meetings. And during those meetings, um, a neutral tutor will go in and just ask questions about are you enjoying the course? How are you finding um, teaching and learning? Have you got any concerns? Have you got anything that you know is particularly going well? You know how you can build on good practice. So that's the opportunity for students to really voice their opinions there and get their voice heard. And it's ultimately with the aim of improving the student experience. So I think that's brilliant, and it's something I always really encourage as well. And it's done, like I said, with a neutral tutor, so you're not having to say feedback to your tutor. Sometimes people can feel a little uncomfortable doing that but um, yeah we're big on surveys we get people particularly HE students to do the national student survey and we also ask our uh, FE students to do a survey as well and um, regularly through the year just so we know how our students are feeling and what we need to act on to make sure we can give them the, the best experience possible really. No that's great thank you Um, so then just one more for me just around what flexibility is there for start and finishing times for students? Yeah, so obviously, and particularly for adult learners in terms of, you know, people who might have uh, more commitments, we understand that we might need to have a sort of level of flexibility for that. So, for for example, for the HE courses that I deliver, they're usually delivered um, once a week in the evening um, and always at a set time. So it makes it easier to plan work commitments, childcare commitments and things like that. Um, if that still isn't quite flexible enough and not an option, I also know that as a college we offer um, online learning, distance learning, um, and obviously we teach such a wide variety of subjects in a wide variety of ways. And um, I just recommend people have a look on our website for adult learners to see what we've got available and what the flexibility of um, delivery is. Obviously, some courses lend themselves a bit more to online delivery. Some of them are practical subjects. It's obviously going to be easier to come in and do things in our workshops and things like that but we are very mindful that for our adult learners they have other commitments usually work very often childcare, travel uh, constraints travel restrictions things like that so we really do we'll work with the student as much as is possible to kind of understand what their needs are and just try and be as flexible as possible and try and give them the best advice to get them on the right course for them yeah brilliant thank you for that Claire so yeah, so um, I hope that little bit of information there Claire's given has, has been useful for you as well. So I think I've given you my experience from a tutor point of view, but um, Ebony, I'd like to know some more, I suppose, about the practicalities of enrolment and how people kind of get to be in the classroom with me. Um, and yeah. so the first question I've got is about admission support, really. Can you tell us what the admissions process is and the, the support you offer? So our admissions process starts from when students are applying to college. So from when they fill the application forms in um, to us receiving them. Um, a lot of the time people apply online, but we do have paper applications we can send out. Um, so once we've got that information, the applications are then processed on our system. And then you go almost onto a waiting list then for interview date so for every course that we have we do arrange interviews with course tutors which at the moment they're being carried out via phone with the exceptions of a couple where they're coming in face to face for interviews um, the reason we do interviews is so the students get to meet the course tutors, the course tutors meet the students, so that they can, can find out a bit more about the course and find out about the students to make sure they're suitable for the course, or if perhaps they're thinking about that course, but then 
down the line with what their career needs wants it but actually something else is more suitable and that's where from a um, career guidance point of view we can sort of step in and say well you know look at other options that are more suitable for what you want to do later on um, so yeah, so we interview for that. Um, once students have had the course interviews, a decision will then be made by the tutors and the curriculum areas as to whether or not a place will be offered to that student. So, um, so we would then send either an offer letter out, which is could be conditional or unconditional, um, saying that you know we want to offer you a place, or if for whatever reason you've been unsuccessful we would then say you haven't been successful on your course, but we would give you the opportunity to look at alternative options and discuss those with you. So um, that's kind of from an admissions point of view in terms of getting your offer to college, that's how we work up to that point. And then with regards to enrolment and inductions for your course, we, if it's a full year course, we tend to run that sort of through summer um, where we will you know, be in contact with you about when you need to come in, what you need to bring. So it might be, um, say any sort of financial support evidence for your course if you know if you need student finance and um, it could be for bursary it could be proof of identification we'll provide all that information that you need to bring in when you for when you start and enroll with us so we support the admissions process from as soon as you apply to then actually getting enrolled on your course Brill. That sounds great. And I want to pick up you. This was kind of going to be my next question, actually. You mentioned there about um, student finance and bursaries mm. and things like that. So obviously financial support is going to be probably a big question that people have got, particularly adult learners. So what kind of help and support are available in terms of finances and things, you know, help with childcare, transport, things like that? So um, childcare and transport, that comes under the college's student bursary. Um, so our bursary works on um, a threshold, a household income threshold. So everyone who starts with us for this academic year going forward, the household income needs to be under 23,000 a year. Um, so what we would do is if you were applying, we would need to see evidence of things like household income. So that could be like wages, benefits, um, tax credits, letters. Um, and the reason we see we need to see this evidence is so that we can then look at um, whether you'll be, el you know, students are eligible or not to get the bursary. So like I was saying, there's different things that come under that. So we have childcare, um, there's transport costs, so whether it be a train, a train fare or it be bus tickets. Um, we also have uh, an allowance for students who may need kit or equipment for the course, so like boots and overalls, or they may need like sports kit, things like that, you know, students can apply for help with those. Um, there's also, for our adult learners, there's also a weekly bursary, which is up to £30 a week. Um, there are terms and conditions with that, as it depends on your previous study as well. We have to take that into account. Um, but there's no stipulation as to what that can be spent on. So we wouldn't say you have to spend it on college supplies or anything. You know, it's purely there for you. So that can also be applied for through the bursary as well. Um, with regards to student finance, so we have, um, if you're applying for a HE course or applying for um, a level three course that requires um, what we call an advanced learner loan at level three level, um, then that would re be required for you to put in an application for the finance to cover those fees. So we can support with you applying. Um, you know, quite often we'll get people coming in and we'll sit and do the application with them so we can offer that support. Um, and as well for our HE learners, there's a different bursary available if you're studying a higher education course. So that can also give you an amount off your fees um, for your course. It can also help again with things like childcare um, and anything that you need to support you with your course. You get like an allowance every term. So um, yeah, that's available as well through financial bursary. Brilliant. So I guess any questions people have got about finance come to you in student services and you yeah. would be best place to advise. Yeah. And Brill, so you've kind of talked about obviously the beginning of the course getting set up, but what about if people want information, advice and guidance throughout the course? What kind of things do student services offer there? Um, so we can offer, we offer one-to-one -one guidance, which 
normally is from if it's at the channel side campus it would be myself um, or if it was our rating lane campus it'd be my colleague Sam she's a careers advisor up there um, and what we would do we, we could arrange one-to-one -one appointments with students to discuss their options so it may be that you know you're thinking about what to do next after your course or thinking about you know might be looking for jobs um alongside while you're at college you know we can try and support you with that as much as possible you know helping with things like job applications and um, cvs as well even things like ucas or applying to university so we do a lot of work around that around personal statements um and that we sort of follow a bit of a structure with the ucas um process because it's like a, it's a yearly thing that takes place so as a college we're fully aware of how that process works and what we need to do to support students to get their applications in on time so um what we are doing as well which covid has kind of had a bit of a impact on is is arranging more like group events and like career visits so it might be um, students going in a group to look around different employers or you know having employers come in and deliver talks to groups of students um, just to try and raise more awareness of what is out there in terms of the career sector um, and the different employers that we have that we perhaps don't often think about so from an um, advice and guidance point of view, you know, we try and do all these things to help students and make an informed choice about their next steps and their career paths. Brilliant. Sounds great. And you kind of touched on it because, you know, you said like obviously um, visiting employers and stuff like that. But like, are, are there other work experience opportunities? Um, so with our full time courses, Part of the program is, um, you know, we do offer work experience opportunities. Um, because of COVID, that has been more difficult the last 18 months to find these placements for students. Um, there's been a lot more virtual opportunities for students to carry out. Um, so what we would do is we would look, um, we actually have a dedicated work experience team who are responsible for trying to find employers um, that will offer placements for students, you know, and maybe they do a week's work experience or they do so many hours a week for a period of, you know, over a period of weeks, say, um, just to kind of give them that hands-on practical experience. Um, so they would work with the tutors and the students to try and find work placement. Brilliant. And I know certainly from my own experience, because I went through higher education to train to be a teacher, I know that if particularly go through education, and I think probably health and social care, um, you, you get kind of assigned a mentor as well. So I know yeah. that I had um, a mentor in my team who was there to kind of help guide me through uh, my own experience in the workplace, because it was kind of work-based learning alongside that qualification. Yeah. So it's nice to know there's that level of support there as well with yeah. the opportunity for mentors. And I kind of mentioned it a bit earlier, but in terms of support, um, we've got a great learning resource centre, obviously. Um, how, how do adult students find that or what sort of things can they find there? So our learning resource centre, so if you come in to study, students studying at the Channel Side campus, it's, um, it's on our level three floor, so it's on our top floor and it's a wide space. It's got our library in there, it's got computers, um, it's got staff in there who are trained more in the digital skills. So any work that you do, you know, a lot of the work will be sort of computer based so they can support you with that. They're there to ask any questions, you know, whether it be about how do I access you know, maybe the virtual library or, you know, where can I find out this information? You know, they there you go to people um, in terms of the digital skills wise and finding things online. Um, you know, a lot of work now is being done on our virtual learning environment, our VLE, and they're responsible for overseeing that and uploading things on there. So um, each for every full time course, you get allocated what we call um, it used to be independent learning, but it's now um, timetabled as essentials learning. And it's an opportunity for students to go up and maybe perhaps do a bit of work that they need to catch up with. Or what they've started to do now is to actually set tasks for students for things to help them. So it might be work around careers. So creating a CV and um, job searching, it might be looking at um, sort of mental health, well-being things, all all different aspects to try and help you 
uh, help students on their college journey. So um, our learning resource team, they'll be the ones sort of overseeing that, provision that element of your course. Brill, that sounds great. And I know particularly during COVID, that's obviously been more important than ever, building those digital yeah. skills and independent learning. And anything um, that we've talked about today, you should you can find more information on our website, which is www.furnace.ac.uk. And there's a contact form on there. So if anyone has got any questions, please, please do be in touch with us. We're, we're more than happy to answer any any queries that you've got. Um, do, you, do you have anything else to add, Ebony? Um, no, um, I think the I think maybe the only thing that I would say, you know, just sort of echoing from what Claire said with regards to the contact form, you know, if you do have any questions about any of our courses, do get in touch, you know, we're open right through summer, so <clears throat> and student services and, you know, there will be teaching staff available throughout, so um, we will still be interviewing throughout summer, but yeah, any questions you've got regarding courses, finance, support, all things like that, then yeah, let us know and we'll happily help you with that. And I think I kind of want to end by saying, as well as being staff members here at the college, both Ebony and I, have, we've, as we've kind of alluded to, have both been higher education students of yeah. the college as well. Um, so I think from personal point of view, I can certainly recommend it. You know, it's really helped me in my career. Um, I built a great group of friends. Um, I got loads of uh, support from different teams, from my tutor. So it, it comes personally recommended as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I would like to back Claire up on that, that you know, it has been really good, you know, the college have been really supportive, you know, and it has both helped us both in a, I'd say, personal development aspect as well, you know, it's helped us with our careers and progress and, yeah, the support we've had has been brilliant. Yeah, so again, any questions, please let us know, but otherwise, hopefully you find that helpful um, and hopefully we'll be uh, seeing some of you in September. Um, so yeah, please get in touch um, and thanks very much for, for watching our little presentation. Bye. Thank you. Bye.